Welcome everyone and thank you for the introduction. My name is Álvaro López and I'm a member of the Wireless Network Working Group at the Universitat Pompeu Fabra and I'm going to talk about the work that we have done in our article entitled uh, 11BE Multilink Operation when the best could be to use only a single interface. First, let me do a brief outline of the presentation. I'm going to start talking about the Multilink Operation introducing this new feature to all of you and then I'm going to point the, its main objectives then I will refer to the main modifications proposed to accommodate such feature on the standard. Later, I'm going to introduce the traffic allocation problem that we tackled over the article. And finally, I will present the results and pinpoint the to the different conclusions and future work. Okay. Okay, let's begin with the introduction of multilink operation. As you may know. The dot eleven B is referred to as the extremely high throughput amendment, and it is the next amendment trying to define the next generation of Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi seven, by seeking uh, to further increase the throughput performance while reducing the end-to-end -end latency and increasing the rel reliability of communications. Okay, in this context, different uh, features have been proposed. But uh, in concrete, we find that uh, the multilink communications are the most innovative ones. Okay, uh, under the multilink communications, we can find the multi-channel band operation and the multi-access point operation. Okay, uh, it's worth mentioning that the multi-channel or band operation is referred to by the task group members as the multilink operation. Okay, and we only study we only study uh, the effects of this one. Okay. So uh, the, the multilink operation okay, uh, has as a main objective to leverage the fact that current devices are equipped with multiple interfaces to provide a framework in which concurrent communications or parallel communications can happen. Okay? Such application is aimed to make an efficient use of the spectrum resources while increasing data rates and providing an easy framework for managing the network. However, the addition of this feature, the multilink operation, requires from some changes. The first modification is related to the architecture in which the max supplier has been divided into two different parts. Okay, first we find the unified upper MAC, which is a common part for all the interfaces, and then we find the independent low MAC. Okay, here on the right side of the screen you can see a schematic where you can find the unified upper MAC and the independent low MAC for each interface. Okay? While the former, the UMAC, performs link agnostic operations, the later, the LMAC, is in charge of link specific functionalities. Okay? Following with the modifications, we find uh, two different transmission modes. Uh, first, there is the asynchronous mode which allows devices to transmit frames asynchronously on multiple links. This transmission mode enables concurrent uplink and downlink communications, okay? And ideally, uh, the task group members, okay, uh, suggested that it should be selected by devices as the default operational scheme. On the other hand, uh, we find the synchronous mode, which is proposed uh, to avoid uh, <clears throat> uh, the in-device coexistent interference which may appear due to the fact of interfaces uh, having a, a, a not sufficient or not enough frequency separation between each other. Okay, So the synchronous mode relies on synchronized frame transmission across all the available, available links preventing an STR or a simultaneous transmission reception capability. Okay, uh, under this mode, uh, the channel access can be performed either following a single primary channel or a multiple, a multiple primary channel methodology. Finally, uh, for the management, uh, the task group members propose the multilink setup process uh, to allow access points and stations uh, to exchange capabilities and the operational schemes. Okay. Between, between them through a negotiation. Okay? This negotiation, it's worth mentioning that it's only uh, uh, 
performed on a single link, okay, and it's also performed through the uh, already defined in the standard association request response frame, okay. Okay, although this feature seems very promising, uh, how to properly distribute the traffic across multiple interfaces is still an open question. Indeed, devices with multiple interfaces will need to have a traffic manager in order to distribute or to allocate the traffic over the different interfaces. In this context, we, study, we studied the, the allocation issue through a policy-based approach uh, which can be easily uh, <coughs> implemented at the traffic manager, okay? And we find it, we find three different policies, okay? The first one is the multi-link same load to all interfaces that allocates uh, incoming flows regardless of the channel congestion. It distributes the incoming traffic flow uh, equally between all the enabled interfaces. Here you have the schematic and you can see that a new flow arrives and it's equally distributed to all interfaces regardless its channel occupancy. Second, we find the multi-link congestion aware load balancing at flow arrivals which distributes the incoming flow, the incoming traffic flow accordingly to the channel occupancy. Okay, here you have also the schematic and you can see how for, for instance, the less congested uh, interface has more traffic allocated than the, <coughs> the, the one that has more traffic. Finally, we, we have the single link less congested interface, which is the simplest policy as it picks the less congested interface and asyncs it and asyncs the incoming flow to, to it. Okay. Okay, if we now enter into the evaluation, uh, First, we explain the setup, okay, and here we consider two different scenarios. First, we find, we consider the a toy scenario, a control scenario, okay, to observe the benefits of a multi-link operational capable deployment against the traditional single, multi-band single link, okay. And then uh, we studied the behavior uh, of multi-link operational capable devices in random conditions. Okay. Also, uh, it's worth mentioning that access points and stations are configured with three wireless interfaces. Okay, and all the nodes perform an asynchronous channel access. Okay. Also, uh, we want to to highlight that the multi-link same load uh, to all interfaces, the MLSA policy, will be our baseline evaluation policy, and only downlink traffic is considered. In regards of modulation and coding scheme, uh, it is selected through the calculation of propagation losses uh, through the enterprise model and uh, the modulation coding scheme is selected accordingly to the signal to noise ratio. Before entering to the results, let us explain let me explain the flow model that we followed, in which we only considered rigid flows, okay. Uh, streaming type in which each station uh, um, requires from from the access point uh, different traffic values okay in an on off Markovian traffic model okay it means that during the on periods the access point receive a constant bit ratio or traffic flow for each of the of the stations and during the off periods obviously zero. It's worth mentioning that both on-off periods are, are exponentially distributed, okay? And once a traffic flow is created, we calculate the airtime, okay, following this formula. So we can uh, proceed to include it or to, to pass it to the CCMA abstraction, okay? Here you have the pi the depicted uh, an scenario where you have, where there is, there are Two different access points, okay, and here the time sequence, for instance, in t equals zero, okay, the access point B does not perceive any load, but in t equal 10, the access point B perceives loads from both, from two of their associated stations, okay. However, at t equal 15, there is, uh, there is also a station 
of a neighboring access point that starts requesting a traffic flow. As you can see, uh, the sum of all loads uh, exceed the maximum allocable edge time, so uh, we have to proportionally reduce uh, the, the load of the, the stations, okay? Each access point, obviously, will, will do this process in order to do not uh, surpass the, the maximum allocable airtime. And it's performed to, through the satisfaction metric, which is calculated as this formula says. Okay, and it allows uh, flows to be uh, or to, to fit into, into the maximum. This abstraction, it's important or it's interesting to, to, to mention that works at flow level and it maintains the essence of the CSMA CA. Okay. Evaluating the, the, if we go through the results, here you can see that uh, multi-link multi -link, uh, <coughs> uh, deployment which uses a non-congestion aware traffic policy uh, performs equally that the single link multiband uh, deployment that it's nowadays or it's currently uh, defined on the standard. Uh, as you can see, the performance is equal due to the fact that the non-congestion aware policy does not leverage the fact of the access point B having two free contention links. On the other hand, here you have the comparison between MLSA policy and the, the non-congestion aware policy with the congestion aware policy and you can see that the congestion aware policy outperforms uh, the, the, the MLSA, the baseline policy. Okay. If, ep, 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 okay. if we go through the random scenarios, okay, we find that in, in the most cases, okay, uh, both SLCI and MCAA are capable to, de to deal with higher traffic requirements uh, and both are uh, and both effectively allocate more than the 90% of the required bandwidth. Okay, as you can see here in the graphic, most of the time the satisfaction uh, of the flows are over the 95%. Uh, in addition, if we see what is the behavior of the of the deployments under high on the higher number of neighboring access points, we can see that uh, both SLCI and MCAA present similar results, okay, but MCAA decay in performance due to the fact that the higher the number of neighboring access points, the higher the exposure of the traffic. That is, uh, allocating uh, through, all, through all interfaces, okay, or to multiple interfaces, performs worse due to the fact that traffic becomes more vulnerable to uh, neighboring access points. Finally, uh, if we conclude, okay, we, with the conclusions, we show that the performance of multilink operation depends mainly on the implemented traffic policy and that congestion aware allocation policies are able to adapt to the instantaneous state of the network better than uh, <coughs> the, the, the non-congestion aware. Okay. Also, we have observed, as we stated before, that uh, um, allocating, allocating flows to the MTS interface is almost as good, if not better, than proportionally distributing the flow over multiple interfaces. Finally, the next steps will be to extend the MCAA to reallocate traffic flows over the different interfaces in a periodic manner okay, to see the response of the network to these changes. Also, we want to study the different allocation policies under more realistic scenarios with legacy single link networks as all the results presented uh, considered multi-link for all the devices. Okay? And finally, we want to integrate the multi-link operation under the software-defined framework, some software-defined networking framework or SDN to design and evaluate the centralized uh, multi-access point multi-link operational policies. That's all from my side. Thank you. And if you have any question, I will be glad to answer. Thank you.